Hey everyone, what's going on? I am Tim Burzens, and in today's video, I wanna share with you a question that can be a really useful cue for helping you to maintain uh, a new state of consciousness, a new relationship with whatever subjects you wanna apply this to in your life, or even on the whole, you know, your, your entire perception of your experience and in your reality. So to set this up, I really wanna start by um, explaining how it is that uh, our awareness is, is constantly in relationship with the subjects within our life. So the big ones would be something like your work or your career, which could be considered your purpose, um, your relationships, and that could be friends, family, loved ones, um, significant others, etc. cetera. Um, your health, which is your own personal body, your own sense of self and your, your ego, your uh, vehicle, if you want to call it that. Um, and then, you know, even the bigger one is the, any relationship to, to a higher power, if you want to call that, or, or a, a philosophy. Um, even if you don't believe in a higher power, that slot of, you know, in the human brain, that slot of higher power is filled with, I don't believe in one. So it's still, you still have a relationship with it in some way. So the way we can think about this is like, you know, if you have a coffee cup in front of you, uh, you can look at the coffee cup and you, you are in relationship with the mug. And so there's a subject object relationship as the awareness who is using the eyes and, and the uh, senses of the skin um, to touch it. Maybe there's a, a coffee in it. You could smell it. Um, you're in relationship with this mug and all the things around it based on the awareness of the senses for this subject. Uh, one of the things that, um, you know, is a great exercise to start understanding how it is that you are not your body, so to speak, is that you can be aware of your body. So if I'm aware of how my body feels, then there is the awareness and then there is the feeling or the sensation. And so the subject is the awareness and the feeling or sensation is the object. And so within that space, I'm creating this kind of dualistic relationship. There is, there is that which is aware and then there is that which, is, which I am aware of. Um, so we can go into um, you know, lots of talks around what, what, does, what is awareness without an object if there is just pure subject, subjective awareness. But the way we can start to understand this more is that rather than dualistically thinking of it as a subject-object relationship, which, which has two polarities, you know, me and other, we can view it instead as the connection between the two, which is one thing. So the relationship between the subject and the object creates a unified thing, which is relationship. So all the things that we see in our reality, all the things that are the subjects in our life, like I laid out already, all of those subjects we have a relationship with. There is me and then there is the other. Um, we could consider this also sort of the foreground and the background. So there's um, in, in any image that you see, you'll see something that's in the foreground, that's the focus, it is the subject of the image. And then there's the background that sort of um, gives the context that allows you to see that, that thing in the foreground. If you have a black object with a black background, you can't see the object at all because you need that contrast in order to see the difference between the foreground and the background. So what we kind of get caught in as humans is the ego, which is our personal identity, which is the content or the thing in the foreground, we focus exclusively on that while ignoring the fact that the background has a huge impact on how it is that we're perceiving that thing in the foreground. It helps to realize that the ego itself or the personal sense of identity, the small self, can only be defined by the context or the background in which it exists. You're unable to define yourself as, let's say, smart or dumb or pretty or ugly or rich or poor without a relationship to the context. If you were to take a rich person and put them into a different context, they might be considered a poor person. So this helps you to understand we're constantly defining ourselves based on our environment, based on that context. And when we get too focused on trying to change the content, we ignore the fact that the contact, content is always in relationship with the context. And so our greater self is the self that sees both the content and context in relation with each other as one unified being, in the same way that I just said, the subject, the awareness, and the object that is, being aw that is aware of, that is one, uh, one uh, being, that relationship is that one being. It's only in the separation of the two that we create the small self that exists in the big world, that, uh, that, that separation between self and other, when really self and other are one because we are constantly in relationship to it. We cannot escape the fact that we are in relationship to the background, to the context, to the world, and that by changing our content, which is to say changing our personal self, we impact 
the, the context in which it is viewed, and by changing the context, we are in turn, the subject is changed as well. So with that sort of uh, as a good setup, uh, we can start to see how it is that we might be able to start um, looking at and changing or understanding how to change the subjects in our life. So if we're unhappy with something, um, whether it's, you know, our health isn't where we want it to be, which is to say that um, the, the body vehicle that we have uh, does not feel the way we want it to feel or it doesn't express the way we want to express or our bank account, you know, money. If we're, we're, we don't have enough money, we don't um, feel happy in that relationship with it. Then rather than saying that this thing, this other thing, my bank account, my body, my personal or my uh, intimate relationship, whatever it is, uh, rather than saying that this thing out here needs to change in order for uh, me to, to, to feel a certain way, we can understand that you know, that approach is an egoic approach of saying that me, the subject, doesn't need to change, the other needs to change. And it denies the fact that the self and the other can't change without affecting the reciprocal. Without Self can't change without changing the environment. The environment can't change without changing the self. It's in an inseparable relationship. So instead of trying to come from this egoic sort of like dictator, superior viewpoint of I don't need to change, these things need to change so that I can feel a certain way, we recognize that we can in turn actually change the way that we relate to those subjects, therefore changing ourselves or our egos, changing our egos in a way that now when we relate to the subject, it has no choice but to change. Because like I said, the con the, if the self changes and the relationship to the uh, subject changes, then the subject has to change as well. Where a lot of people get stuck is that uh, if they're in that sort of egoic mode where they don't think that they need to change and that the world needs to change, then they resist any sort of growth or evolution uh, within themselves because they're, they think that if they give into that, that the world will sort of act like a withholding parent and say, oh, if you're okay with things the way they are instead of resisting them, then we'll just give you more of the way things are. But the truth is, it is actually the resistance to the way things are that keeps them that way because you're resisting yourself from going through the fires of transmuta transmutation, the fires of change. Uh, if you allow yourself to go through the change, then the relationship between self and other changes, and therefore the other also has to change as self changes. What you'll see in uh, the way that a lot of people approach life is um, those who are resisting growth will end up, uh, you know, while the places and the faces, the superficial things in their life might sort of go through a, a change in a process of um, cyclically uh, um, just processing through different, uh, different forms, the patterns and the relationships and their actual lived experience, which is to say the context of their life, does not change at all. So maybe they uh, go through you know, three different relationships and it's the, a different person in each relationship, and yet it's actually the exact same relationship. They're repeating the pattern over and over and over again, and they're not actually moving forward or growing or changing at all, despite the external superficial change. So true change requires a change in that pattern, which is a change in the relationship, not just the change in the external symbol that you are relating with. So the key to all this is that if we're willing to let go of trying to change the subject, which is, uh, keeps us remaining in that egoic mode of, you know, I don't need to change, the thing needs to change. If we can let go of that, it allows us to place our attention on changing the way that we are relating to it which is to say changing the context. And if we work on the level of changing the context, we can start to understand and we'll start to see very quickly how it is that the content changes. But we are not able to do that unless we can accept the content as it is without trying to change it. Now, this doesn't mean that we're going to resign to it because resigning to it is sort of like saying, okay, well, this thing isn't how I like it and it just is that way and I just have to deal with it. Well, you're still unhappy with it. You're still creating that same unhappiness. You haven't actually changed the way that you're perceiving it or the way that you're relating to it. So while it maybe sounds like you're, you know, quote unquote, accepting it, you're not really accepting it. You're resigning to it. You're leaving it as it is without recognizing that it can change if you were to just try to understand it as it is. By accepting it, you remove your attention from the, the problems of the subject Instead, focus on trying to understand it. And as you understand it, then the context and relationship changes. So is the Carl Jung quote that says, um, to understand all is to forgive all. So when you can understand the subject and, and understand your relation to it, um, all the factors that go into what has created this, the energy level at which you are 
uh, um, relating to it. What are you bringing to the relationship between you and your bank account or between you and your body or between you and any other? Whatever energy you're bringing to it is part of the equation. So instead of blaming or judging or resisting, you simply look at it and say, okay, I want to understand this. And then as you understand it, you start, it starts to become very, very clear what it is that needs to change in order for your relationship to it to change. So what ends up happening as we do this, as we accept and then move into changing our relationship to it, is that we hold a new space or a new environment for this subject to exist within. Because um, both self and other are existing within the space of your awareness. So the energy and the environment that you're creating in that space of your awareness is both determining your definition of self and your relationship to the other. Uh, the other and self in that relationship are manifesting or expressing based on the environment uh, or the frame of your consciousness that it's being held within. So when we start uh, thinking about it this way, we can, all, we can almost think about it as uh, if we were to be growing bacteria in, um, in test tubes or in uh, culture plates. Bacteria, certain bacteria can only grow with um, the certain correct environment, the right temperature, the right pH, the right air pressure, and all of those things. If we change those variables, then those bacteria can no longer thrive. So if we have a sense of being uh, poor or scarcity, we don't have the money that we want in our lives, or we don't have the health that we want in our lives, what's happening is that we are maintaining an environment where that energy can grow and thrive. It's a plant. It's just like a plant that grows or a bacteria that grows. And so if we change our relationship to it, what we're doing is shifting the environment that no longer will support the energy that we don't want and instead will allow the new energy to be growing that we do want, which would be that of, of feeling abundant and feeling like we have plenty of money and we can do whatever we want and, and have autonomy. We have the health and the freedom and the um, vitality to, to live how we want to live. So rather than trying to change the thing directly within the environment that is supporting a lower energy or a, a, a relationship that we don't want, we change the relationship and let go of trying to change the bacteria, the subject. By changing the environment, we trust that that, that that will have to change the thing that is growing within our awareness, that w it, within our mental garden, our inner space, that that thing is going to change because uh, just by the fact that we are um, no longer giving, giving energy to, giving our attention and our energy to the uh, propagation of that negative energy, we're now maintaining the new state of consciousness that we want. But again, to do this, you have to let go of trying to change the content and focus on changing the environment, the, the relationship instead. And as we do that, that means we have to let it evolve at its own pace. We hold the new space, stabilize that new space, and allow that, the content to be as it is, trusting that as we hold that space, instead of collapsing in on trying to change the thing, that if we hold the new space, the thing will change on its own. And that makes it effortless. That means that we don't have to go in and use our willpower to try to force this thing to change. We can just maintain that new state of consciousness in which that thing is already changed. And then because of, because of the way that things grow and the way that our awareness is at the energy at, at which we are allowing things to proceed within our consciousness, then we can allow, uh, then we can trust that it's not going to grow in a way that we don't want. It will grow the way that we do want it to. So all of this brings me to the, the cue or the, the question that I talked about in the beginning of this video. Um, and this one can be really, really helpful to just kind of keep in the back of your mind as a tool. That's how I like to use cues is whenever I have an insight or a download, I'll create some sort of cue out of it that I know if I, if I get into a state where I'm feeling some negative emotion, um, which is an indication that I'm in relationship to something, to some subject in my life uh, in an agreement that I don't, that isn't serving me. Uh, if I slip into those negative emotions, I look, okay, what is it? What's the relationship? What am I looking at? And then I'll use this cue to sort of remind myself to come back to the energy of holding that new state of consciousness. Again, because if you hold that new state of consciousness, you're holding a different environment that will no longer support the old, but will allow the new to flourish and grow. So the cue is this, um, it's a question, or it could be phrased as a statement too, if you want. Uh, you'll ask, can you please teach me a new and improved way of being with this subject? Or it can be a demand or a, com a command rather, not a demand, but um, you can command and say, please teach me a new and improved way of being with this subject, a better way of being with this subject, um, a better way of relating to, a better way of perceiving, how, whatever words you want to use. The idea of this is that it, it doesn't matter 
you know, who you're asking the question to, whether it, you want to say the universe or life um, or God or Jesus or Buddha or Krishna or uh, even your inner being or like your higher self, whatever it is you want to ask, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you're creating that energy of openness and receptivity. So you're asking, you're saying, please teach me a, a new and improved way of being with this subject. And in that energy, if you hold the openness from that question, you're welcoming in new information that's going to give you a new way of perceiving it. So by holding that space in time, when that state space becomes stable enough, the plant, that new plant will grow, that new perception will grow. So I sort of view it like downloading a file from the internet. Um, when you download a file, um, there's obviously like the progress bar that moves along and, and uh, once it's finished, the file's downloaded, now you can open it. So in the same way, when you start asking and you, you remain receptive, the amount of time that you are remaining receptive to new information rather than collapsing into the way that things used to be and engaging and buying into the old perception that you had around this subject, but instead of, instead of buying into that, you remain open for something new, the amount of time that you do that uh, is equivalent to the, uh, the progress that you'll get in that download bar. So you're, you're trying to stabilize this new environment, allow the file to download, and, and if you just commit to that and stay with that, over the course of, uh, you know, in some cases hours, um, some cases days or weeks, and if they're really big things or maybe the situation requires a longer time to process, it could be months or years, uh, if you hold open that space and hold open the um, willingness to receive a new way of perceiving a subject, then eventually that download will complete and all of a sudden, boom, instantaneous insight will come to you and it will just be given to you. Oh, this is the new way that I can perceive this. It, and it, it shifts the entire way that you perceive the subject. When that happens, you will no longer relate with the subject in the same way and it will be a very short time before that subject starts changing. That's, that's uh, simply the way that true change can work. Instead of continuing to try to move the furniture around in your consciousness, you are actually changing the very nature of your relationship with that furniture in the first place. So this is the only way for true change to happen. If it doesn't happen this way, uh, you're basically just um, staying on a very superficial level, repeating the same patterns over and over and over again, uh, using a lot of effort maybe. Um, and it's not to say that effort or, or willpower uh, and, and action-based um, progress doesn't have doesn't create some sort of advancements or some, some sort, of, sort of change in your um, reality, but what actually is happening is that the action creates a new, a new uh, condition for you to perceive, which then changes your perception and allows that new condition to be there. So a lot of people um, might work really, really hard on a business, for example, putting in tons of effort and willpower and they don't get anywhere. Other people who put in a lot of effort uh, are willing to allow themselves to change and their perception to change. They're willing to grow. And then as they change as a person, as a result of viewing new conditions, then the conditions are allowed to grow in a different way and they actually change. Um, but again, it comes down to you changing the perception, changing the space in which you're holding it, because if you don't do that, it cannot grow. You can't grow back the, you, the bacteria that you want in the wrong environment. You can't grow them, no matter how much effort you apply. You can keep trying and trying and trying, but the environment's gonna be continually killing them. You're working against yourself. Instead, create the right environment then it almost doesn't even matter if you are intentionally growing the right bacteria or not because the environment is so supportive of it that it will constantly be taking them to where uh, they they to where you want them to be anyway and of course you know just to remind you using the bacteria as an analogy for or a metaphor for uh, the subjects in your life whatever they might be so try this out hopefully uh, this talk alone gave you some shifts but as you go uh, through your day look for anything that causes a negative emotion, then ask what, what is the point of this negative emotion? What it's indicating is a, a relationship in your life that is not in alignment with, uh, with, with what you want, with the fullness and totality of who you are, and it's not in alignment with where the energy could be or where the subject could be in your life. So find out where those areas in your life are that cause those biggest neg negative emotional drains. Find out your relationship to that subject Start to explore and, and seek to understand, don't seek to change it. Just seek to understand it, which means you have to let go of changing it, which means you have to accept it as it is, not resigning to it, but accepting it as it is and saying, okay, it is this way, now what? Rather than saying, I don't want it to be that way, I wish it was different, or 
I guess it is this way and I just have to deal with it. That's resignation. Instead, you say, okay, now what? It's forward looking. It's willingness for it to change, but not needing it to change. You're okay with it being as it is because you're more focused on changing the perception, the environment. Uh, then as you go through uh, your life, make that a, an anchor, like anchor it in that every time you, that subject comes up in your life, you'll look at your relationship with it uh, with the intention of holding the new state of consciousness and using that cue, please teach me a new and improved way of being with this subject and then just remaining open to receive answers. And again, it doesn't matter who or what you're asking this question to, it's only important that you ask it and that you actually remain open to receive an, an answer, which means that you don't continue buying into and being engaged with the old way of perceiving, the old relationship, the old agreement to that subject, to perceiving that subject in that way, but instead remaining completely open that I want this relationship with this subject to evolve. I want to view it in a different way. I want to have a different perception. And then remaining open. Don't try to find the perception. Just hold the energy and just, and just be receptive to new things coming. When you're least expecting it, something will come and all of a sudden hit you in a new way that will, will be like, oh, I, I understand. I, can, I don't have to be upset that my bank account is low because I can recognize that there are plenty of options around me for making more money. Or there are, are all these uh, opportunities that I didn't even, I hadn't even considered before because I was blocked off to them because I was so stuck in that energy of being, of being poor or being scarce. So these, th these things are all around us, but we're blinded to them because we're attached to resisting the subject as it is. As we let go, as we accept it, th those things start to change. So try out this cue. Let me know what you think about it. Um, if you have great successes with it, that's awesome. If you need some work with it and you want to, um, uh, some of my guidance, please leave some comments below or send me an email and we set something up. Uh, please like this video, subscribe, it with, uh, subscribe for future content, and then share it also with anyone who you think might get a lot out of this. Um, with all that, I think we are finished for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Please let me know what you think of it, uh, and I will be back very soon to talk more about this kind of stuff. Awesome. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Peace.